Immediately upon setting foot on this continent, we had to adjust our schedule, planning, expectations, and attitude. I'm guessing it will take all of our two months here to begin to understand what that iconic phrase of this is Africa truly means. X Overland's Africa Expedition is proudly presented by General Tire and the X3 Tire. For whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And Season 6 is brought to you by the X Overland Network, proudly supporting the best stories possible for the Overland community. And by our official apparel provider, Vertex. Botswana and already two weeks into our African journey, we are navigating along an uncharted path between intense anticipation of adventure and our destination. We are in the first two hours of the second day of off-road tracks on our way to a critical meetup location where tonight's guests are supposed to be coming in just like us from miles and miles away. And right away, Africa's two tracks are showing its true colors. The dust is unbelievable. And there is no question that any of our vehicle build weaknesses will be exposed. Hopefully, everything that pops up will be solvable. Ooh, man, bumping. No man's land out here. Think you could survive it, Eli? Well, if they're doing it, I could probably do it. Wow. When we get an opportunity here, there is something a little loose under the truck in Orion. Copy, copy. Every occupant and piece of gear is taking its hits. Cameras, electronics, and our mindset. We are starting to wonder if we are up to this task. Done enough miles now that anything that wasn't torqued right or specked right would be coming loose, so. And on top of all that, the area is full of threats beyond the mechanical war between nature and machine. There's real threats beyond the bushveld, apex animals and predators that care little that you're here or who you are. But the road is exciting and it's epic to be staring at the African plains from behind our very own windshields. Elephants kind of terrify me due to past experiences. So if we see um, some elephants by the side of the road, we want to give them a lot of space. Worst case scenario, if they start charging, you drive over whatever you need to and get out as quickly as possible. But hopefully by the end of this trip, I will learn to love them. Elephant Sands is our destination today and is several hours of dirt away through a remote stretch of Botswana pans and plains to reach it. Elephants are terrifying and every year 500 people are killed. An Ellie, as they're referred to around here, is able to roll any of our trucks and crush them with relative ease. And they are truly the kings of the land. There it is, right there. Oh, right there. Whoa. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Whoa, wow. Well, there's a bunch of the kids. Whose ever idea this was gets a gold star for the day. Ah, this is incredible. Look at the tusks on that thing. Walking into this elephant sanctuary is a little unnerving because the only thing that separates us from those five-ton beasts is a little wire, which seems to be sufficient to keep the observer safe only 10 feet away. 
And notice how quiet. You can't hear them when they walk. Yeah. Crazy. The feet are absolutely silent. Yeah. Elephants have it all. They're huge. They have a t tusks, a huge ears, yeah. a trunk. A, they feet got, and they have feelings. Feet and feelings. Whoa. I appreciate that this is like a baby step for us. We don't have elephants walking through camp yet. They're just over there in their own little watering hole doing their thing. No, no. Not amazing. The African year is a drama of transition playing out in the bush between the rainy season and the dry season. And these watering holes are competitive spaces. <laughs> the elephant farted. <laughs> It's just like dad when he wakes up. Like the elephants in front of us, within the dust and dry country, they have made it to water. And I can sense some relief among the team. It feels good to be in camp. That was the closest I've ever been. I've actually never seen African elephant before, and we just got to experience them for a long time now. And now we get to have a nice dinner in a camp where for all we know, when I go to sleep in the rooftop tent behind us, uh, one could be walking right outside. It was pretty cool, but pretty, pretty dirty. Let me get cleaned up. It's the first time I've done this, and I don't know what's happening. It's still one of our first nights in camp, and we are bad at it. Everything is in the wrong place, or we don't know where it is at all. But that's OK. We'll get there. Yeah, what are you doing? I'm looking for the long range antenna. Hmm. And I'm coming up short. <laughs> that hasn't been out since Nordic Peak. Yeah. Looks like it traveled yeah. on a boat over the ocean. Uh huh. Dr. John and Eli are firing up the bride to give it another try. I think this will take some time to master. And it's our goal to be good at it by the end of the trip. You throw to Peter. Okay. Nice. Let me show you how to do the elephant. <laughs> I am Rochelle's sous chef for this evening. So I am chopping, chopping, chopping. Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Got some good, good bush food right there. Mmm. Pick your, pick which one you want. The best one. This is the best. Thank you. You're welcome. Play. I tried to give him. Thank you. Give me ten pula. You wouldn't take it. Give me. Mmm. It's the nights when you're like, oh, the warmth of the fire, oh, the food that was cooked on this thing. Oh, and then the, the anticipation of my bed at night, you know? Mm. Like all these great things one after another that you don't get at home. That's true. Yeah. Dr. John is also in charge of our nightly medicine. We're all taking malaria medication and for extra measure, he has prescribed a nightly cocktail for extra precaution. This is a gin and tonic. The traditional and medicinal drink favored by Europeans to ward off malaria since the first colonizers arrived in Africa during the 19th century. Found in the tonic water is quanine, a malaria-fighting compound, which is mixed with gin, water, sugar, and lime to make it more palatable. And this concoction became the basis for the popular cocktail we know today as gin and tonic. Over the lips and past the gums. Look out, stomach, here she comes. <laughs> Cheers. Go. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. John. Yeah. <sighs> Pretty good. <laughs> this morning, we are up early and have our sights set on a radically new experience. Ashley has booked us a tour on one of the biggest rivers in Southern Africa, the Chobe River. So. 
Without further ado, cue the river guide. Do not fall in. <laughs> We're exchanging one vessel here for another, an African riverboat, to have an experience unique in our travels. Cherry Murundu, the owner of Chobe Cherry Safaris, will serve as our knowledgeable guide, I think. Is it your first time or second time for you here? First. Second. How many first time? First time, how many? First time. First time. Me too. <laughs> first time, yeah. <laughs> second, you can have us in the way. <laughs> okay. So the river is called the Chobe River. Um, this river is demarcated or divided two countries. Right inside over there is Namibia, left Botswana. The river's the boundary between two countries. So now we go upstream there at the Chobe National Park. The Chobe winds through the borders of three African countries. I can't help but feel like it's somehow appropriate that we'll be on a river today which blurs the lines between borders as it takes us into a haven of African wildlife. After all, animals are unaware of any borders. Wow. It's like a dinosaur. In the diverse aquatic ecosystems of Botswana, the Nile crocodile, or Crocodilus niloticus, play a pivotal role. As apex predators, they wield influence over prey species, contributing to the delicate balance of the food web. This river trip is an attempt to compress our timeline into seeing a lot of animals at once. Dr. John is only able to be with us for a short time, so we are doing everything we can with our setback schedule to maximize our experience. Now, for Peter and Richard, our trip up the Chobe is a dream being realized. As passionate photographers, the opportunity to capture animals like these up close is like stepping into a world of National Geographic. Giving these two their shot at their dream gives me the chance to put my camera down and experience this all with my family, which I think is winning. Are those hippos? Guy, look, hippos. Ah. Whoa! Thank you. Yeah, check it out. I think if there's any animal that resembles how I feel inside and think that I look, it's probably the hippopotamus. <laughs> Especially the one when they're underwater and they're just like, Ugh. that's kind of how I feel. A great time with it. But I'm okay. besides. Okay. Look at all the elephants. And the little ones. You got little ones. Look at that. Dude. He's big. Wow. How long do elephants live for? 75 years. 75? Yes. Wow. wow. Dinosaur plant. When I was a kid, I saw a documentary of elephants swimming. And ever since, I've wanted to see that for myself. And as we push up the river, it looks like I might have that chance. Unaware of where my heart would flow, I was waiting in. Just think of the relief of the weight that a quick swim offers these giants. Think how great it must feel to take the pressure off the feet, even just for a brief moment in life, to feel weightless. Waves that shake me out. Now, honestly, looking around, the feeling among the crew seems to also be weightless. Never been so easy. We're checking off dreams left and right. Time in this moment seems to be standing still, and I think there's something to that about travel. And I think this is exactly what we all wanted to see here. I was waiting in the undertow Said I drift with fed away light bulbs Unaware of where my heart I didn't know I had dreams to be a National Geographic uh, wildlife videographer, but uh, I can check that off the bucket list because just did it. In the water feels Seeing all of this with your family is awesome, but experiencing it with your friends as well, watching them be who they are and 
go to work on their passions is even better. Already, I can see that our African expedition is becoming one for the books. Now it seems oh so curious How'd I wind up so far from home When I barely had left the shore All the birds are roosted up in the trees You've been formally introduced yet, but this is a little home project we call Little Boy. Little Boy because it's essentially a little atom bomb driving around behind us. This carries 91 gallons of gas. Right now it's got 93 gallons of gas in it, and it's coming pouring out of the breathe nozzle. So this morning we're actually going to pump some fuel out of this into Sequoia. Among our many challenges in preparing our fleet for Africa, fuel capacity topped the list. We knew we'd have to get creative to have the supply we needed to traverse Africa's most remote sections of Bushveld. So we built a fuel trailer to haul the necessary fuel to get our trucks up to 800 miles in a single push while accounting for dismal mileages that occur with a transfer case in four low. We were not able to test this system as it needed to be shipped without fuel in the tank. So here we are solving the next build challenge in the field. Wow, that's fast. Oh, we, got a, we got a fuel leak. Uh -oh. Way to tighten that would be to put the, take the fuel filter off and spin this whole thing. That's a messy job, but we can do it. Let's do it tonight, in camp. Epic night, last night on the river, this morning. A couple little things, We everyone slept great, which is really good. Fuel tank is an issue with that thing puking. Fuel all over the place, we'll get that salt tonight. Today, we've got a two or three hour drive if we push good to a new campsite where we hope to get into camp early but uh, things are going good problem solving is happening all the time we i think are really enjoying that part of the process of it all we're settling in so or at least i'm trying to convince myself that this is the case and i'm trying to do that because i need to be positive and i'm nervous about this two track ashley keeps telling me about And if our first main road sign reads like this, then the trail ahead is probably no joke. Please select four x four. Your vehicle may make it in two x four, but it corrugates the road terribly. Very sandy ahead, especially if you are driving a Land Rover. <laughs> I think that's a great excuse to air down and put her in four wheel drive. The road ahead is going to be rough and so our decision to air down provides the perfect teachable moment for our newest up and coming driver, Mr. Ryder Croft. If we had a steel wheel and we went over a bunch of bumps, what would this truck feel like? It would just be like shaking everything apart, right? Yeah. Well, if we went down to a super soft, super jello-y tire and we had to drive over it, right? Yeah, what would happen? It wouldn't be bumpy, right? So. Your suspension and your preservation of your truck starts at the tires at the ground. Because every vibration, especially when we go over corrugations, corrugated roads, transfers all the way up into the vehicle. Eventually the vibrations make it all the way to the top, right? Yep. And every single bolt, every single fitting, every single clamp, every the hinge hoods, everything feels that, right? And it systematically is destroying your vehicle. Take the time 
get everything just right because this time that we commit to it will save us a bunch of time down the road hopefully by preventing a failure. Yeah? yeah. Let's try that again. Well, let's see how this goes. This gets pretty uh, ruddy in here. Suspension wise, we're probably at like 35% of their capability. We're not intoxicated here in the middle. We're just playing with the shock settings. I'm just fascinated. I've never driven a vehicle where I've been able to adjust them before. It just is really cool. I have prepped the team to be a little extra picky on this section of the trail. And I'm being a little overcautious to make sure all of our gear will make it to the next 6,000 miles of this trip. Driver's side front on Raven. Just wondering if we can do a stop and fix. Turn. I am still unclear as to why the vehicles are experiencing so much transferred vibration. I'm not even sure if that's the right term. But I do think it may be due to the road being rutted out by smaller tires most African vehicles are equipped with and by solid front axle vehicles. This is creating an offset frequency to our larger tires and things never seem to find a sink. An early camp arrival today will be a win. We just need to keep pushing. The road vibrations are being dampened as much as possible by our air down 35 inch X3 tires, but the left or right shutter is making its way to the very top of the vehicle and shaking our roof racks and alu caps constantly in a side to side oscillation. One thing is for sure, I know we have the best gear to tackle this, but the road surface is like no other I've ever seen before. And it goes on for miles. Our suspension is tuned in the best of its ability with Icon CDEV app, and the rest falls to finding the right speed to maximize travel time and minimize destruction. camp arrival allows us to take some time to set up just right and start addressing some known issues we have been putting off. But first things first, food. And Dr. John has been working on that all on his own. Gee, I think this is a South African way. So I Dinner heard. Was served everyone. Where did you get these? Those look amazing. Hot. hot. And how? How did you eat these? Cheers. 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 Mmm. <laughs> 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 There's an adage in life that I have grown quite fond of over the years, and that is, take care of what takes care of you. Coming in here, we were feeling a lot of the vibrations, a lot of the same stuff from Iceland. Reached in here, and sure enough, the, the battery was loose. With all that needs to be done to the trucks so we can continue our 6,000 plus mile journey across Southern Africa, the boys are learning how to fix things fast. In the process, they're becoming an integral part of our team's dynamics. With their dad, <clears throat> me, being busy with everything from driving to directing, it is a win for me and for them to have Dr. John here. A veteran Good. ER physician and highly experienced adventurer, there is no one I'd rather have mentoring my boys than Dr. John. And I'm happy to see we are making the best of his short time with us. This panel up here, if you look up here, is just kind of rattling in the wind. So we'll 
Go ahead and drill a hole in it and put a zip tie on to keep it from rattling. It's just kind of annoying when you're driving. The short travel day today was nice, but it has reduced the amount of time the alternator has had to charge up our camera gear and the house batteries. We're still sitting fairly low, and we need to get our solar panels out to supplement our power needs. With these short days, we are actually experiencing the opposite problem of our Nordic expedition just eight months ago. In Scandinavia, we had daylight into the late hours. Here, it's dark by 6 p.m. So, I need to get a new chore established with Ryder. Okay. Point it towards the sun. We'll have to move it a little bit throughout the rest of the day. Yes, sir. And we need to get all these chores done before our guests arrive for the night. We've just got done fixing all the trucks. Right as the sun was setting and we're around over here. You have to check this out. The night's guests have decided to come in. sit and observe the most amazing dynamic display of creatures I have ever seen in my life. All competing for space in a harsh world, we sit in near silence, allowing the world to play out in front of us, as if we are not even here. planet Earth right now. That was amazing. Elephants walking under. That, that sunset competes with the Faroe Islands in different yeah. ways. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It's 6.30, and Richard lights the stove for the morning's coffee. There we go. That's the kind of morning it is today. It's unseasonably, historically cold for Southern Africa. I like that we came from yeah. Montana summer. It's just slightly warmer than this. It's the coldest summer on history books, too. Yeah. It's just following us. Ugh. I'm sorry. I don't think we brought it. Apologize. Up early for a big travel day, the team is in full swing for pack up to meet the departure time set by Ashley. But just as we are about to leave, I find another issue that must be resolved. Oh, I for sure, yeah, wow. Yeah, we gotta watch every bolt. Every, if you ever have time to lean, you got time to turn a ratchet on stuff. Just the vibrations are taking this truck apart. Check this what, one. What's the, what's the actual rhyme there? You got time to lean, you, you got, got time, time to, to clean. clean. There we go. Throughout this inspection, we find that both rear doors were loose on the Tundra and Tacoma. So far, this is the expedition of the stop and fix. And we're becoming masters of this practice, but it's crushing our schedule. Hopefully, we won't have any further mechanical setbacks, because today is a big one. Engage mode push. Mode push. Mapping isn't perfect in Africa, and it takes time to get the hang of it here. It's unpredictable in scale and distance, and it's had Ashley up at night in her attempt to make time and distance estimations. So today's drive is between 145K and 168K. And the reason why that 
is such a range is because during my calculations, I used multiple devices to figure out the kilometer range, and they were all different. So we'll see once we get into camp uh, what our own kilometer number is. Sounds like a proper adventure. Our initial progress is good, but the road is deteriorating further and slowing our pace and flogging our equipment. And I'm beginning to believe that we are naive to the fact that Africa sets the pace here, not us. We've been beep bopping along on this off-road road and uh, the top rack caught really, really loud, louder than usual. So Richard and I popped up there to take a look and all of the roof rack bolts are completely loose. So like you can just message. screw them on with your hand. Starling mounts loose, jerry cans rattling everywhere. So uh, the Sequoia trailer has the tools. I have agile hook up. We are going to go up to them, grab all the tools, pop out, tighten everything back down, and we'll probably just need to stop and do this after every, depending on the roads, like. Tucker, like, do you want us to get the tools out? Every hour. Yes, please. Yet again, we have come to another full stop. Richard, hop up here. Because of your gazelle-like agility. And then we'll take that case off, and then we gotta tighten the bolts underneath it, and then we'll be out of here. The FX3, I can take it, Richard. Thank you. Drill those holes. Ooh, that smells nice. Okay. We are getting it. We got the drill. Oh, dude. I get to use the vice. Yes. Tight. Huh? Cyrus has got Now watch that. Watch that. Make sure nothing flops down and hits glass. Thank you. I'm also being picky right here because we can't afford to break any glass. Between the dust, the heat, and the cold, having broken glass anywhere on these trips could be unbearable. With Richard doing well at the adulting part, I resume my constant pursuit of teasing my sons. Peter doesn't seem amused. Doc is helping out by digging through our deep six box on the side of the Tacoma's goose gear system where none of us really remember what's in there. Oh, we're looking for the straps. Get three hammers, tire fixers, battery pack, heavy duty squeegee, USB cord. Uh, straps. Here you go. Thank you. It is better. Much, much better. Want Riveting right. TV here. Oh, ho. what are we, geniuses? That ain't going anywhere. Oh, you guys are awesome. Holy cow, this sounds a million times better than before. <laughs> There's like no sound up there. Back in the saddle, it's time to try and make up some time. We are on high alert mechanically and visually because the wild game situation is also picking up. As a right elephant. And left. I've never been interrupted by elephants before. Then we got a herd of elephants, family of elephants to the right. Everybody just be in a good position to bug out if needed. I am blown away by the amount of elephants here. I had no idea. And come to find out, Botswana does have an elephant problem. With over 250,000 in an area that can only support about 100,000. But the problem is they have nowhere else to go. The surrounding areas are full of poachers and therefore have reduced populations in the areas that can support higher number herds. And they are essentially refugees of their homelands and pushed into dense populations here in Botswana. But because they are safer here, the Ellies do tend to be more forgiving of intruders. 
They seem very chill. Yeah, for sure. Until they're not. Yeah. It's been a great road. It's fun driving. There's elephants running in front of you. There's giraffes everywhere. Man, what a wild animal. Crazy critter. That was amazing. That's so cool. Amazing. Yeah, so uh, I guess that's why they have a speed limit of 80 kilometers an hour. It felt like we we're driving through Jurassic Park. Uh, that would be Jurassic Park. <laughs> Meatball Math says we've got 60k to go, so we're maybe more. We can stop and make PB and J's if we need. You're getting lots of yes votes from the Sequoia here on uh, on that motion. I'll find a good spot. We'll try to make this a 20 minute lunch stop. This is the best sandwich I've ever had. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheers. This expedition presents the opportunity to train up my middle son now with some time behind the wheel. Let's roll. Well, we'll have fun. We're gonna train up a young man here and get him going and uh, hopefully we make it to camp in time. Oh, that was on foot break. <laughs> I was trying. <laughs> yeah, it takes a minute to calibrate. Okay. <laughs> Stop. Stop. I must say, this road is awesome. Yeah. Epic. For my 15-year-old son, Ryder, this is driver's ed, Africa style. And you're not looking here. You're looking way out there. Yes, sir. Because if it happens here, it's already too late. So you want to scan the road up there. You can come back and forth with your eyes, right? Yep. But you're, you're looking way up there. Yes, sir. Otherwise, you'll find yourself at the feet of an elephant. It's safe to say he's in the hot seat, especially since the AC unit quit working in our Tacoma. Now I'm nervous and sweaty. But is there a better time to have your son debut as a new driver for XO? Probably not. Well, good job. We made it to camp. Thank you. And we didn't die. One home, please. Did a great job. This was a really fun stretch of road. It was awesome. I, I will never forget that stretch of two track. What incredible scenery. Here you go. Hey, 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 wild dog, wild dog. Or hyena or something. Jackal. Jackal? That's what was pushing. Oh, here he comes, here he comes. It's a wild dog. It's got the round ears. Oh, there he is. That's there a wild dog. Is. That's a wild dog. Someone want to take 40 and get two I got you. This is an African wild dog, a very rare thing to see out here. And they come right through camp during their hunt of the evening. I didn't realize how pretty they were. They're bigger than I was expecting them to be. Yeah, they got yeah. the They're really dress. big. That was cool. Yeah. And as we set up camp, it comes to our attention that there is also a hippo who has set up camp not 100 yards from the fire in the middle of the river. So we will have to keep our eye on him all night long. If the wind's just right, that's gonna be a thing. Yeah, this is as good as it gets here. Dude, this is, this is awesome. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Overlanding is something, isn't it? It's really great. It pauses time. It's the, one of the only ways to pause time. A serious illness and travel will stop time momentarily. Other than that, it keeps ticking. The clock keeps ticking, you know? With the night's medicine poured, the mood has set in. 
and Dr. John always has the right thing to say. We could do, uh, oh, what about the ball of gold in the sky? Do you know that? That's perfect for this. I once saw a ball of gold in the sky, so I reached for it. And when I achieved it, lo, it was a ball of clay. But then I backed away again, and by the heavens, it was a ball of gold. Yes, by the heavens, it was a ball of gold. What does this mean? Well, it means that like you're thinking about this trip and you're thinking it's a ball of gold in the sky. And then you get here and it's like, I got on every layer of clothes I had the other night, okay? I was freezing, you know? The wind was blowing, my teeth were gritty, I was missing home a little bit and it kind of, it became a ball of clay. And then when I get home, I'm gonna look back on the pictures and the memory and ah, oh, by the heavens, it's a ball of gold. It is a ball of gold. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Just as the evening is winding down, a fellow overlander in the area we chatted with earlier comes over to show the boys a very special thing that they have located in the brush. Yeah. Sit on each other's laps. All right, don't just end us as a butt. By the way, what's what's your name? My name is Via Meyer. <laughs> it's a difficult name, but it's an old Afrikaans name. Okay. So are you, you're obviously from South Africa? Yes, yes. I'm actually from Pretoria, just next to Joburg. Okay, cool. So even us, we are overlanding here. I'm about 1,500 kilometers from home. Yeah. That's cool. All right, this is a part. I will meet. And uh, let's get my watch update. So the leopard just went into the bushes. They're trying to explain to us in which direction so that we can maybe just spot it with a spotlight and getting a, get a reflection from the eyes. Then we can allocate it. Yeah, I'm not for far. See him Paula killed at the back there in the bush. Whoa! What? That thing is amazing. Oh my. That is insane. Don't see that every day. Oh my. Oh my gosh. He just doesn't care that he's in the light or whatever. Holy cow. What did you see? That what was happened? awesome. That was yeah. insane. Which, was it? Oh yeah. Goodness. Saw a leopard. What happened? What? Huh? Saw the leopard. You did? You came yeah. in. We only saw a leopard. And it like came right next to the truck and then went to the river to go drink. It was probably, it was... Dad, that leopard was probably from no me to you. Way. That leopard was me to you. Yeah. So wow. Right awesome. next to us, came up and drank. Brought us to. Amazing. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Thank you. Not wow. only did we see a leopard, we got to like oh, watch yeah. him walk from his kill to the river. Like he looped around to the river, found out right where he was going. And then we just watched him drink at the river for like a good three, four minutes. And then wow. we went back to the kill and just checked it out. But it was incredible. Didn't skip a beat. Well, Africa, you continue to impress. Oh, how sweet you are. What will you show us next? Next time, Africa pushes the team into new territory as we plunge into the Okavango Delta. What's next is unexpected, and our curiosity has never been greater. Join us next time for episode three of X Overland's Africa series.